one sleepless night I planned this route. All the 80 cities in Germany that have a hundred thousand inhabitants or more. It was a daydream, something someone should do, a fantasy. But it kept popping back up in my mind. 80 cities, 4,600 kilometers, 32,000 meters of elevation, one gear. To me, cities always hold the promise. Not the promises of consumerism, culture or social contacts that they might use for marketing purposes. All the failed architecture and city planning, as well as the splendid main streets, hidden ways through parks and often messed up backyards, make the material for countless adventures. For tales and stories to live, watch or just imagine. My idea of the city is one of Hey Arnold or The Three Investigators, where behind every corner there is something new to discover, things to explore, myths to find. Ciao Jakob! Hello! <laughs> Have fun! Thank you. Being an underpaid bike messenger, taking a full month off to go cycling was a little difficult. So when the time had come to go on this trip, I couldn't really postpone it. The weather forecast showed rather cold and wet weather for the next two weeks and especially the corona situation was more than fragile and could cross my plans every moment. Everything but grocery stores was closed, commercial overnight stays prohibited and using platforms like warm showers or staying with friends of friends at least risky. So I would be all by myself. I left the city of Leipzig, it's five in the evening. Now it's nice and sunny, but before it was raining. I hope the weather stays like this, we will see. I passed the first city, Halle, just the neighboring city to Leipzig. Um, but I think from now on, I will have a headwind for the next five or six days, I guess. I hope it won't be too bad. Everything is dirty now. Leaving the city on a short afternoon ride and staying at a friend's place in Jena, the first full day of cycling was awaiting me with rain and climbing. Seven percent average for two kilometers, but with 17 percent peaks. will be a lot of climbing. I think I've already done a thousand meters of climbing. Pretty steep hills, kilometer long climbs. For me from the flat regions of Germany, 
that's a lot. You can probably see the hills in the background. I mean, it's really nice view when you are up here. Then there is a lot of headwind also. Sometimes a little bit soft rain, so far not really too bad. Let's see, might be one of the hardest hardest days of this trip, I guess. There will be two or three other days that will have a lot of climbing and might also have headwind. So that will be as hard, I guess. But so far I'm really lucky with the weather. It's awesome. I knew that this stretch would be one of the hardest on the whole trip, but I wasn't expecting weather like this. Additionally, it was a Sunday and I was crossing the former inner German border, one of the least dense regions. So food and water supply was a real task that day. I was hiding from lightnings, hail and heavy rain. I got wet, I dried off a little, I got even more wet. I realized that my rain jacket has had its best times and was not keeping the water away from me anymore. I want to ride in a thunderstorm. Okay, it's not really raining that much, but there's thunder. I mean, I can't see any lightnings, but if there's thunder, there are most likely also lightnings. So I rather wait. I mean. Looks like it passes over there somewhere, but oh yeah, there was a lightning. I will wait. Yeah. Should I go? Should I wait? How dangerous is that? I thought it stopped. I went away from the point where I was standing first. And then it started again, it's hailing, that stuff really hurts. Really thick uh, grains of hail. You can probably see it over there. Yeah, now I found this corner to hide in. I mean, the hail hurts, but also I was kind of scared of the, of the lightning. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere today. I won't reach my goal for today, I guess. And there... There in the background, there's the blue sky.
confuses me every time I see a gas station that's closed on Sundays or during the night. I thought that's their unique selling point. Well, maybe for some people it's actually pumping gas. When I finally found one that was open, they provided me with really salty chips, cookies and water. Guess that's my meal. I almost did 200 kilometers today, which is nice, but I actually wanted to do 250. With all the thunderstorms, I had to wait quite a, quite a long time. And now on my right, it looks like there is another, at least rain, maybe thunderstorm coming. I need to find a good sheltered sleeping spot, maybe, a, I don't know, some small resting place for hikers or something. I spent the night in a carport at a car dealership, but the weather keeps being annoying. Wet, cold, with the threat of thunderstorms. And this luxury sleeping spot with a highway next to it had a power outlet so I could charge my devices. That was nice. I have to put on gloves. When I was planning this trip, I thought I mustn't forget my bathing stuff to go jump into a lake every now and then, but now I'm wearing gloves. It's set to be raining all day, so let's see. I have another 30 kilometers for today. It's a lot of climbing again. Yeah, the weather changes. Whenever I'm dry, I get wet again. And this is so exhausting. I really need to think of an alternative. Or I thought about quitting for now because the weather forecast for the next two weeks is just as shitty. It doesn't get better and I can't do this for two weeks just riding in rain, being super exhausted. I will definitely get sick when I continue like this. And I don't want to do it like this. I wanted to have a nice early summer trip, enjoying the long days and being outside on my bike and enjoying it and not having to push through every day. But the weather I can't control. And I didn't want to do it in weather like this. I mean, I could have done it in March when I wanted to do it with weather like this, but I wanted to do it in May and June when the weather is usually nice. I wanted to eat ice cream and go swimming in some nice lakes. I'm wearing my full winter kit and I'm still getting cold. I can eat something nice and then maybe this fills up my energy. Maybe I will just stop it for now and then do the last two thirds of the of the loop in summer when it's actually nice weather, when it's actually the way I wanted to do it. Because this is not what I wanted. <laughs> I think there is a saying that goes something like, I have never seen someone being sat on a bicycle. Well, I have cried on my bicycle. At this point, I felt like shit. I was cold, I was wet, I was hungry. I couldn't just go to a store and buy a new rain jacket or stay in a bed and breakfast for a couple of days to regenerate if I'd catch a cold. I felt that if I continued, I'd most likely get sick within the next days. But all of that wasn't the main reason for me feeling so miserable. I really wanted to go on this trip. I planned it for so long, checked out the route, made new bags and bought new equipment, invested time and money. But now that I'm doing it, I feel like I'd rather go home, lay in the bathtub for some hours, cuddle with my cat, wear some dry clothes and stay in bed all day. That passed? Yeah. Okay. This is probably the shortest three-week cycling trip ever. I've been riding for 
three days. Today is the fourth day. Uh, I think I got a cold. I'm not quite sure yet. Sometimes you just feel a little bit weird in the morning. So I will try to wake up completely, eat something and then check how I feel. But if I have a cold, then I mean I will have to stop and go home. The weather right now is really nice. I mean a lot of sun. The path I'm on, I don't know where in the distance there's rain clouds already and the forecast says it will be raining later, but I hope I can ride a little bit in the dry and then see what's coming today and how far I will keep going. more the feeling of failure, being lonely, lost and defeated that made me feel so sad. I've done 645 kilometers in less than 72 hours. That sounds quite okay, but the only thing I could think of is the 3955 kilometers that I hadn't done. The plan I failed. The promise I broke. What felt right at that moment was, take a train to Leipzig, get back to the sewing machine and make or order some proper rain gear. That's it. I'm going back home to Leipzig with the train. Um, I actually felt quite motivated today. I decided to only ride when there is no rain and uh, wait until the rain stops in bus stations. But it was too much rain. Like this, I took, I think it took me five hours for the first 75 kilometers. So I can't really reach my own personal goals and also what do you do all day in bus stations that's kind of boring and so i rather go home to leipzig uh, get back on the sewing machine make some proper rain gear and then restart the trip again i left the first train pass that could take me home standing at the platform I just couldn't get in as the doors opened. I was rechecking all the forecasts for all the cities I would pass within the next days and they all kept painting the same picture. And that wasn't quite Van Gogh's Café Terrasse at night, but rather something like landscape with rain. So I swallowed the bitter pill and took the train home. Seven hours of regional trains, I don't know if this was a good trade-off. That's the view as I take the train back to the track a week later. Yes, it's still raining. Yes, the streets are still wet. But according to the forecasts, it's going to stop in one or two days and leave for some nice summer weather. Also, I got this shiny new red rain jacket with me. I feel better prepared, more relaxed and I'm about to leave Bavaria soon. A part of Germany where I always feel alienated. Additionally, some counties here still have a curfew in place and the region is said to have very strict law enforcement. So it's either riding through the night without being discovered until I reach the neighboring state or finding a well-hidden sleeping spot. And then this happened. 
So I wasn't really tired, but I thought I should go to bed early. And I found a spot, just a piece of grass with some bushes and some trees. I could already see. Oh, there's a kid. Um, I could already hear that there is a bunch of animals around and that was a little bit annoying because they make sounds and at least me, it makes me nervous. I was almost asleep and then I heard some kind of big animal like shouting at me or grunting or I don't know, just making a weird sound. I thought it's a wild pig. I, I'm not sure if it really was one. It was a super weird sound and it was going half circle around me, but coming closer, stopping at some points, just shouting my direction. Yeah, that of course made me super nervous. I jumped out of my sleeping bed, climbed up, climbed up the tree. The animal then was eventually going away but of course I didn't want to stay there even before I thought there's quite a lot of animals after 15 or 20 minutes I climbed down from this tree I couldn't really sit on there I had to stand on that one branch yeah then I climbed down packed everything all the grass was super wet all my feet and pants and everything got super wet but when I was almost finished I saw something running at me, jumped up the tree as, fa as fast as I could. Obviously, there seems, seemed to be an animal that does not have any problems with approaching human. Standing on the tree again, super terrified this time, not just nervous like the first, first time or a little bit scared. I was, I don't know, like shaking, I was cold. I couldn't see the thing. I couldn't hear the thing. I always ever heard it when it made this shouting sounds, but never just walking or running. I could still hear it from time to time and it was in the direction of the psychopath. So I felt like trapped because I didn't want to go into the direction of that thing. And I was on the tree for two hours on and off with all the packing and stuff just waiting. Eventually I could leave. I was still super scared, just walking towards the cycle path as quick as possible, jumping on my bike and riding away. The first thing happening while I was on the road was a deer just crossed the road in front of me. Oh, fuck. I'm so done with wild animals. And then I, when I was laying here, almost sleeping, a cat came walking by. There are so many cats here, I don't know, but they are super curious. But of course, since I was still so loaded and full of adrenaline, even that, that cat scared me and I scared the cat and she ran away. Then I slept for a couple of hours. That was actually okay, a little bit cold because I was wet again. And then in the morning, someone came walking their dog and the dog woke me up barking at me like, being, I don't know, half a meter away from my face. <sighs> yeah, but I guess from now on, at least for the next days, I will directly go for bus stations and stuff like that. I don't feel safe around wild animal at the moment. I think I've never been so scared before. Climb. Two and a half kilometers, 11% average, and they were just ripping off the asphalt. One lane, they just poured the, the fresh tarmac, it was hot, and the other lane was just rough. I mean, that would have been a nice climb, I guess, 
even with the track bike because it was very steady if it would have been able to roll a little bit but like this it was just hustling i thought i'm done with climbing for today after the schwebische alp but this part between reutling and stuttgart it's just up down up down but ridiculously steep and just through the villages zigzag uphill and then paths like this downhill that is cycling infrastructure The day was really exhausting. A lot of climbing and especially after that night the 15% inclines and weird descents through forests took a lot of energy. Arriving in Stuttgart in the afternoon the weather was awesome. I asked around in a German fixed gear community called Eingang Gang to try and find a sleeping spot with likely minded people here. Katharina and Kirill offered me to stay at their place and they have by far the cutest neighbors. Squirrels. They joined us for breakfast on the balcony before I kept going. It is time to get rid of the rain jacket. I mean, today I'm just using it as a wind jacket. I have the sleeves up all day. It's really warm. I mean, it's around noon. Yeah, finally, I'm riding in shorts since an hour probably or one and a half. And now it's also time to get rid of the jacket. It's short, short time, finally. That what I wished for, that what I thought would be the whole trip. I just passed through that empty theme park. I mean, it's close to, to Corona uh, that wasn't on the track, but um, the road I should take, uh, there was a construction. So I thought, oh, it seems like there's another road. I will just take that. And that just led me through the uh, theme park. I mean, the gates were open. You can walk around there and look at the goats and stuff. But uh, yeah, all the attractions, the roller coasters are closed and everything. Don't scare me. Riding in shorts, vineyards, roller coasters, rolling hills. This day was exactly how I wanted the whole trip to be. As I was riding along a federal street in a pretty dense region, I had a hard time with finding a sleeping spot in the evening though. Most likely also because I was still pretty sensitive with where to sleep due to the animal situation earlier this week and because I really like riding in the late evening and during the night, so I usually start looking for a spot when it's already dark. That was my sleeping spot tonight. It was actually pretty okay. I mean, a little bit windy up here. <laughs> And the street there is a little bit loud and in the night when I came there were some T 
teenagers hanging out on the other side of the of the soccer field so I could hear them yeah but they left more or less soon after I mean probably an hour after I went to bed um, now I just woke up it's 8.30 so I slept pretty long which is good weather looks perfect today again even though it was a Sunday I knew there wouldn't be any games on the soccer field as sports events and group training was still prohibited due to the pandemic situation. Since the field was in between two small villages, I thought that it's very unlikely to be woken up by kids trying to enter the slide, keeping them from playing. I don't know what it is with this ready-made pancakes that they break when you try to roll them. I mean, I always only get them when I do bikepacking stuff because sometimes in the evening they have them 50% off and it's nicer than to eat bread three times a day. But yeah, you can't roll them. If you try to fill stuff in there and roll it, they always break. It's so weird. I've done 89 kilometers so far. Pretty boring day today. Now there's a lake here where I'm hanging out. There's a super strong headwind until in the evening, so I will probably like go very slow during the day and then rather do a couple more kilometers in the evening. The weather was so nice and on a Sunday it's hard to do really long rides anyways because of the food and water supply situation, so I'm not really in a rush. This is really, really cool. I have my own small apartment for the night. Um, I really like the fixed year community in Germany. It's uh, awesome. There's so many cool and helpful people in this city, in Karlsruhe. Uh, there was one guy, Michi, and he said, yeah, sure, come by. I have a space, I can host you. And then he brought me to this flat, just two streets uh, apart from where he lives. Uh, that's his brother's flat, but his brother is not there at the moment, so I can sleep here tonight, which is really, really cool. I can take a shower, <laughs> shave my legs and uh, sleep in a bed. Don't have to worry for white animals. Yeah, I'm really, really happy. This is, this is awesome. No, I mean, this is an awesome trip. Heidelberg. I think it's one of the nicest cities in Germany, but the cycling infrastructure is just really bad. In this whole state here in uh, Baden-Württemberg and in Bavaria, I think in the whole south, I don't know, they don't care much for cyclists. It's, it's the regions where all the German cars come from and they care for cars, but they don't care for cyclists. And now that there are so many people cycling, they are just dangerous. Like the cyclopaths are kind of dangerous. They are in a pretty bad condition sometimes 
And when there are other cyclists, they are just way too small. They are probably wide enough for one person. When there's someone coming from the front, yeah, someone has to ride into the bushes, basically. And then there's always cars turning right, passing the cycle path. Until today, I didn't have any dangerous situations with cars. Today, I already had three. So, <laughs> the cycling infrastructure here is just super, super shitty. Heidelberg might be one of the nicest cities, but Mannheim and Ludwigshafen are the worst. So annoying. I don't know how long it took now to pass through these two cities. Way too long. Now I hope I'm more or less out. I mean, I'm in this kind of forest here, but the cycle path also is really shitty. A lot of potholes. I mean, basically just potholes you dodge around. Um, but in a couple of kilometers, if I remember it right, there should be some nice small roads. Riding through these two cities in uh, midday sun was super annoying. I think like I actually have a sunburn now because there are no trees, no parks that you can ride through. The microclimate of the cities is just really, really bad. So maybe it's good that, that it's already so late. strong sunburns on my calves, my left arm, I guess in the neck a little bit but not too much, on my ankles here, weirdest places, it's not so nice. And I guess on my lips they are super dry even though I drank enough so it's probably not very healthy. There's always something on this trip, always, but I mean I guess this something is better than the rain something. I prefer a little more sun because your body just gets used to it. That your skin rest kind of from the sun for a couple of days and then it will be fine. But you never get used to cold and rain that just makes you sick. So this is still nicer than before. But also it's kind of tiring. I mean of course because the healing process takes energy out of your body. So I would just stick with shorter days, around 150 kilometers, I think, for the next couple of days until I feel better again. Sitting in a comfy apartment, eating a lot and creaming my crab red skin like every 10 minutes, I left Frankfurt in the late afternoon. I could have stayed for a day, but first of all, I wanted to keep going as the weather was really nice. The second point is that my friend Robert is coming to join me for a couple of days and we agreed on meeting in Koblenz in two days. For me that means about 440 kilometers to cover within that time. And all that while trying to not ride in midday sun to protect my burnt skin. Um, I want to keep going for another hour. 
more or less and I need to find a sleeping spot and then I also um, want to call Lure. I have 108 kilometers so far. Uh, would be nice to go for another hour. These streets are so nice. But I need to find a sleeping spot. And I'm not sleeping in that tall grass kind of stuff anymore. Reminds me too much of the weird approaching wild animal region. So yeah, let's see. I would like to find something within the next 30 minutes. Good morning. It's 5.30 or something. I don't know. I didn't really sleep much. I mean, I rested, but I couldn't really find a nice sleeping spot. The first spot where I was, it was just a resting spot outside of uh, a small town. But then when I was sitting there and I was on the phone with Lore, there were too many people and cars passing by and then bats started flying around there and I'm kind of scared of bats since I once got attacked by a bat. I mean, as you might know by now, I'm scared of all the wild animals, but uh, bats especially. So I decided to keep going for a little bit. I thought just until the next village, but there also was really nothing. And then I kept going and there was just a bigger city, a military airbase, uh, actually United States military airbase, and more cities and cities and cities and nothing really where I could peacefully stay, which is a little bit a problem on the whole trip, I guess, because I'm just passing through so much big cities and all their suburbs, riding along on a lot of big streets that it's really hard to find quiet spots. Then I decided to just stay in this bus station. But I did something that I didn't think of before and was actually kind of smart. I just put up the hammock from there to the other side. That actually worked out okay-ish. I mean, I could rest, but there were cars passing by all the time. Now it's super early. I will have my breakfast. Just milk rice. I discovered this, uh, that on this trip, that this is actually a pretty good breakfast for me. They are so small, they are sealed, so animals can smell them or they can't run out. I always take them in the last supermarket where I go in the evening and then have them for breakfast so I don't have to stop again in the morning. I talk quite a lot. I will eat, pack and then keep going. It's uh, 8 in the morning, I've already done 40 kilometers I think. For today I corrected the route because Komoot was suggesting riding a lot of hills, mountains, climbing a lot, but instead I can just go along this river here next to me. It seems to be a nice wide path so far and it's just five kilometers extra, basically no climbing. That might be nice. It's 130 kilometers to the next city. I don't know if I will stay there. From there it's another 110 to Koblenz where I meet up with Boba tomorrow. My plan for today is to ride until 11 or 12 
have an early lunch break, hang out somewhere for a couple of hours, maybe take a nap. Oops, uh, I should have turned there. I probably do most of the track today, 80, 90 kilometers tomorrow before noon and then hang out in Koblenz and do another 90 kilometers or something in the evening together. That's, that's the plan for the next two days. Let's see. This weather is so nice. I mean, I didn't sleep well, as I already told you. But with weather like this, it just doesn't matter. At noon or something, I can just lay down in a park and sleep for another two or three hours. I have enough time. The sun is up till pretty late, so yeah. Okay, we'll keep riding. what they are mining here. They are digging away half the mountain, like in every mining company, I guess. But I just wonder what for. Just red stones. Spot. I, mean, I don't know if I could sleep here during the night with the highway. For now, this is a really nice spot. Problem is, I would probably not take this road in the middle of the night because it's too risky that there's potholes or something that you don't see, so I'd rather take bigger road when it's already dark. I would just need to start looking for the sleeping spot as long as the sun is up. Not in dawn like I do now, but way before. But I always want to keep going. I mean, that's also the time where I like to ride the most. That's the problem. I will take a nap now. Compensate for the lack of sleep from tonight. I've already done 125 kilometers today, so that's quite a lot. But tomorrow is a holiday, and I don't want to ride too much on a holiday because food and water supply is uh, a little bit difficult still. I don't know if the restaurants and embassies are already open here. Yeah. There behind me it looks like a thunderstorm or at least some heavy rain. Um, I will have to get a lot of food, something for tonight and something for at least tomorrow for breakfast and maybe some snacks for riding. And then I actually wanted to keep riding for another two hours but I will just ride until I reach the river and then hope I will find a nice spot to camp there. Maybe something with a roof with that rain.
and buildings around so I'm not too worried. Still it's not the nicest view. But actually first we we'll test for the tarp and rain and so far it keeps up pretty good. Let's see. sleeping spot for tonight directly on the river that was a super nice and relaxing night once after all even though there was a thunderstorm but somehow I wasn't really concerned about it there's higher trees than the ones I put my hammock up there's hills there's a village so I thought it's very unlikely for lightning to uh, to stuck exactly into into my tree. Um, I mean, of course, it's a little bit creepy, but not too much. So that was fine. Uh, yeah, I slept. I don't know, in full eight hours, I guess. I was awake in in the night in between because I heard that weird <laughs> grunting animals again, but very far away I mean I guess on the other side here um, but still I mean I woke up from that and uh, just thinking about what happened the other time when I heard that and yeah but then I kept sleeping uh, I guess the, the trees were super good for preventing me from the heavy rain but also the tarp that I made it's super light and now was the first time I think it had to keep up that heavy rain. I had some rain underneath it but uh, not like this and it was perfectly. I mean yeah everything stayed dry. It was super warm and comfy in there. I mean also it wasn't that cold during the night I guess but uh, with that setup you can sleep pretty well. I was hanging the hammock a little bit weirdly. The food part was hanging slightly down. Uh, yeah for today I have a lot of time. I have 50 kilometers to go, probably, maybe not even, and meet up with Robert at 5 or 6 in the evening. It's 8 in the morning now. I will do basically a rest day. I have a bunch of food. I will eat a lot of stuff, rest in my hammock. Uh, hope that the sun comes out so everything dries. That would be nice. And yeah, then pick up Robert later in the evening. This will be so cool. Now waiting for Robert at the infamous the so-called German corner where the Mose uh, flows into the Rhine and there is a gigantic monument of I don't know who, uh, probably uh, Wilhelm the Great or something. Yeah. And now I mean I guess I have a couple of hours to wait. It looks a little bit like rain there. Maybe I have to find a, another spot later where I stay dry. But so far, I will just hang out here in the park. I'm really lucky, more or less, with the weather right now. While I was cycling here, the 50 kilometers, it was awesome cycling weather, sunny, 
a few clouds and then I was just riding around here in the city for 10 minutes trying to find a park or something and when I arrived at the park it started raining and there was some thunder again but I could find a place to hide so for now it's boredom the forecast says thunderstorms for the next three days if they pass by kind of quick and it's always just half an hour you see them coming you can find a a good sheltered spot to wait then it's not that dramatic you can probably even use the brakes to eat and to recover but if it's the same as uh, on the beginning of the trip that it's just raining all day then this will be very very hard I mean especially for Robert he came for three days of cycling in sunny weather because that's what was predicted uh, a couple of days ago but let's see I mean, I have this nice red jacket now, so what, what can go wrong? Robert arrived in the early evening and after he was sitting in the train for hours while I was sitting in front of an empty building to shield me from the rain, we both wanted to ride. Throwing the postcards to my mom and Lore in the post box before we leave the city, the climbing starts as soon as we cross the Rhine and pass the city sign. We are approaching the Westerwald, a mountain range west of the Rhine that we have to cross to get to the next city. Siegen is probably the most remote of the cities on my list, or at least the hardest to reach. From whatever side I would have approached it, it would have been quite far from anything else, with a lot of climbing to get there. Mainly climbing. Robert is getting used to his new setup. What do we mean? We have the same frame. Like there's uh, this small gravel road here and he can't ride here uh, because somehow his fork has way less clearance. Yeah, klar. Right. Incredible. Okay, let's. Also machen wir jetzt Armut oder nicht? Ja, also wir können kurz auf jeden Fall was füttern. Es geht ja immer so weiter, weißt du? Ja, von mir aus ist es auch cool. Gute Zeit zum Armut essen so und dann können wir danach halt gucken. Opposed to the city itself, the way there is really pretty. A lot of hills, forests, a tunnel and some weird commode tracks that we rather not take and stay on the street instead. We pass through the city leave it on a steady climb and eventually find ourselves on a cycle path that looks like it's been built on a former railway. Leading us through a pitch black forest, we stop at the top of the hill at a resting spot and set up our camp. It's a lovely morning on a lovely place. After a lovely night with a lovely guy. So, yeah, it's, it's great. It's going to be great. Only 230 kilometers today, so should be an easy recovery ride. Some hills, so easy peasy. Yeah, let's get going. I just lost my spoon. I didn't just lost my spoon. Uh, I lost it yesterday before I even rode a hundred k. Best thing to do when you have three more days of riding in front of you 
and you just lost the opportunity to eat like a civilized person in civilization. Yeah, that's 50 grams less, so more climbing is possible now. Anlehnen haben meistens keine 12% Steigung. Ich glaube, die können maximal 4. Ja, ja. Das heißt, wenn das eine Bahnlinie ist, die unseren Weg möglichst lange geht, dann können wir jeden Zug ganz gemächlich die Hügel hochrollen. We could have just stayed on the main road somewhere there instead we were going up and now have a descent on a super shitty road. I mean, the other path would have been probably 50 meters more, but we could have descended like decent people. And now we descend with 15 kilometers an hour because there's just potholes, gravel and whatever. It's so fucking annoying. It looks so much like the rain or thunderstorm could start every minute, but it has been looking like this all day, basically. I mean, with some sunny parts in between, but... Jetzt habe ich das Essen gar nicht gefilmt. Ach Mensch. Today was a day where we did uh, main design scene. This is some beautiful cities in the Rhine area. Almost no cycling, basically. Rolling around from spot to spot, just hanging out. Nothing, basically, really, absolutely nothing. Well, we did one ramp, which was pretty hard. Okay, I'm completely lying. Apart from the last part, we actually did a run ramp, which was really hard. And we cycled 220 kilometers. I thought the sleeping spot was pretty cool. We had, we had a beautiful sleeping spot. I mean, I wouldn't call it beautiful because they were just cutting down the whole forest. We had so many small difficulties and problems that took ages. For the first three hours or something, we stopped every 20 minutes for something. Some, some routing problems here and there, some water problems. We It didn't always like find the cycle path that we were supposed exactly. to go on. And we did this like uh, 500 times. After we left the agglomeration of Bonn, it was really smooth cycling for the rest of the day. We reached Aachen and on the way back, I don't know if we were rolling down kind of or if we had a tailwind, but we were so fast. We were just motivated. We were well I mean, it didn't really feel like I was pushing any power at any time and we were still so fast. I don't have any snacks anymore. And I don't want, I want like salty snacks. I would like tortilla chips, that would be really cool. Should have gotten tortilla chips. Maybe there's a Speti or something. And then? No, I ate that all day. Chocolate, chocolate peanuts or chocolate Perfect. almonds. Yeah, but it's, it's more or less the same. Okay. 
right now that's on the edge of uh, the Ruhrpott I mean I'm <laughs> that's probably totally wrong if you live here but for us that's on the edge of the of the Ruhrpott and the Ruhrpott is a big agglomeration of cities we cover the next 13 cities on the list within about 120 or from here I think 140 kilometers or something since this will be super annoying or would be super annoying during the day we wanted to this is a night ride. It's already pretty late, almost 10 I guess. We try to find a spot where we can sleep in Bochum, that might be an option. Um, then we would have covered more or less half of the distance, probably even a little bit more and would do the rest of that big agglomeration tomorrow, trying to get up early and also tomorrow is a Sunday, so that should Red. be okay. We're sitting on a spot with rats of a church. My motivation is pretty low at the moment or I mean now it's better again but a couple of kilometers ago it was pretty bad. I thought okay yeah when I've covered the whole Ruhrpott or when I've done that then I basically only have two or three more cities to see that I've never been to before. I realized that I will definitely not manage to do the full 4,600 kilometers because I have to be back in a couple of days. That just took my motivation away. 
I want to see the Ruhrpott, even if it's just during the night, that's probably still cool. I like night rides and cities in the night especially. And then I want to see Münster and Paderborn, I've never been there before. Uh, but after that, the whole north, I don't know how hard I want to push. I um, was talking for way too long <laughs> again. I always have these 10 minute monologues and then some. It's gonna be the weirdest video ever. Um, yeah. Let's see how the night ride gets. Leaving the city of Krefeld on some nice village like roads in the late evening. Having a slight tailwind, no traffic, and a nice talk, that perfect moment happened. Everything feels alright. It doesn't matter how close I'd get to my set goal, or how I'd get home. It doesn't matter yet where we'd sleep or if we had loaded our bags with enough food for Sunday. Riding along on these almost empty roads is all that matters at the moment. The Ruhrpott is a former montane region, with all the many cities here basically built around coal or steel mines. Since Europe externalized all its dirty industries and the plots are exploited, there is a lot of former industrial infrastructure without further purpose. We had a super cool night ride, exploring this interesting region that is so different from every other place in Germany, including some sightseeing of an UNESCO World Cultural Heritage, the Zeche Zollverein. Waiting in front of a car dealership in Duisburg where we wanted to meet with Thomas, I read that he had organized a spot where we could stay during the night. We are so happy. Not having to do another 120 km to reach some less dense area. No hammocking in the middle of the city today. Perfect. Again. At the end of our ride through seven cities in about three hours, as we are crossing the Bochumer West Park, five dozen supposedly drunk teenagers are cheering at us as if it was a Tour de France mountain stage. I bet this ride would have been horrible during the day. In the night, when we had all the multi-lane roads all over this agglomeration for ourselves, it was one of the greatest night rides I've ever done. Arriving at our sleeping spot at 3 in the morning, eating real quick and typing my daily block into my phone, it's high time to go to bed. Robert's original plan was to ride with me most of Sunday and go home to Berlin in the evening by train. Checking the possible stations and available tickets along the route during the day, his only option is to catch a train around noon in Dortmund if he doesn't want to spend half the night in regional trains. Sadly, we have to split up again in Bochum. I will keep collecting the last few cities of this agglomeration, while Robert has to take the direct route to the city from where his train leaves. Two more cities to come that are a little bit outside already, and then I think there will be some nice and quiet roads hopefully again and the next city after that is in about 120 kilometers distance so finally some riding again the last two and a half days of riding with friends have been so different to the rest of the trip and i already miss them if you're lonely when you're alone you're in a bad company but i have a couple more goals to reach and days to go i am so exhausted right now I don't know exactly why, I mean, I haven't ridden very far today, I mean, only 125 kilometers so far since I left pretty late after that night ride. Yeah, that also affects my motivation, of course. The weather is not, not super nice. I mean, it's okay, it's not raining. It's a little bit windy, a little bit headwind. Finally, there is some nicer tracks to ride on again, not just through the city all the, all the time. But I'm just freaking exhausted. <sighs> like everything starts hurting a little bit. My butt, my hand, especially my feet. If I stay on the track, it's about 300 kilometers to Göttingen, which would be the last city on the list that I have never been to before. If I reach Göttingen, I will have been to all the major cities in Germany with my bike. Just not on this trip, not in one go, as I wanted to, but I have been to all the other cities uh, before on other trips. That's my minimum goal to reach, 300 kilometers now. I don't know if I can do that at the moment. I don't know. Yesterday I was feeling fine, like perfectly. Uh, today in the morning 
also still pretty good but now I don't want to I mean I could I mean I, I can't even talk or stop filming that's too exhausting at the moment leaving the Ruhrpott agglomeration I finally get to ride my bike outside of city traffic again but it's Sunday and as always on Sundays I might have overestimated how far and fast I should go on the little food that I packed. Weird thing is that I am so in my own tunnel that I don't realize that it's fairly normal to be exhausted after a night with little sleep on a day with little food while being in a mental low and cycling distances every day that are sometimes hard to reach in a busy week. C'est la vie. I have no idea how but all of a sudden I felt awake again. I mean I had to pass Münster because I don't really like to sleep in inside of the big cities of course. And when I was outside of the city now I'm yeah I'm normal again. I feel like I could ride another 100 kilometers today or something which I still won't do I guess. Uh, I will start looking for a nice place for my hammock but that's super weird. I mean now I feel really really good again. Let's see how the night gets. That's my perspective. I feel kind of weak still. Um, but maybe I just need to have breakfast. So, <clears throat> yeah, need to get my hammock down, then pack everything, and then find the next supermarket to have some proper breakfast. Then let's see how it's after that. I think I will go to Kassel today, that would be about 240 or 230 kilometers quite a lot and especially very hilly um, quite a lot of climbing let's see how this goes for today offered a sleeping spot there which is always nice um, I mean I like sleeping outside and last recently I've been very good with finding spots it's always nice especially since I don't have my dynamo hub so I can recharge all the batteries from my cameras from my phone um, and I can take a shower and probably shave my legs so it's already kind of late. I will eat really, really quick, like always, and then try to cover the last uh, 70, 80 kilometers in three hours. I don't know. It's uh, kind of hilly. I don't know. Like, I want to be there before the sun sets. Tomorrow might be the last day of the tour. I mean, 
the last day of trying to reach cities and then I have one more day to get back home to Leipzig. There is a lot of climbing today, even though I don't pass a real mountain. A lot of hills, one or two very steep ones, but most of the time steady inclines with 50 to 100 meters altitude gain and immediate rolling down. Other than the climbing, the day was rather unspectacular. Not too much traffic for bikepacking with the track bike rather fast. Boring food during the day. Today is the 7th of June. I made it to Kassel. I have ridden my bike 1368 kilometers and climbed 9269 meters in June. Not too bad. Most of the months I struggle to find the time and motivation to do a thousand kilometers. day of collecting cities starts with an enjoyable ride along a river together with Marius and some small towns and villages full of old timbered architecture before. Oh, this is an annoying load. Road again. Have a headwind. The landscape is boring. The villages are boring. The path is not in the best condition. I don't know how long. This stretch will continue, I hope, not for too long. It did continue for about an hour, but after my typical lunch break in front of a discount supermarket, the track rapidly changed. Okay, I thought I had the climbing done. My cycling computer didn't show me any more inclines. It usually has a list of the inclines to come, but then there's another page on the cycling computer where it just show me the, the altitude profile, like. I don't know how to describe it better. And there I saw I still have to go like 100 meters up again. And I thought, what? 100 meters? That's quite a lot. There should be an incline to get there. But then the track actually sent me on this path here, which is probably an old, ra uh, an old railway um, track. And when they build cycle paths on that, that's usually super cool and when they are in good condition because the incline is so little, you can't really feel it. You're riding uphill, steady. This section especially is super pretty because it's like a tunnel made out of trees. I will try to show you. I hope you can see it like this on the camera as I can see it in real life because that looks really, really cool. This part of the track was one of the best on the whole trip. I actually looked into the route and tweaked it a little bit here and there to get off the main street and on some nicer roads between fields, on paths through parks that I had discovered on previous trips. Since everything is going perfectly fine at this moment and I have come pretty far for today, I make a decision. I'm on my supposedly last ride on this trip. It would have been 200 kilometers to go back home in the morning. But I wanted to collect some more cities and I mean I still have some time 
and I decided that I would use that time to try and ride 500 kilometers in one ride and then have an extra recovery day or at least just ride until I can't go anymore. Let's see how far that gets me. I hope it gets me home. So let's see if I can make it. I am at 191 kilometers now, 300 kilometers to go. It's about eight in the evening. The closer I get to Leipzig, the easier it should be to get home. Um, or just put up my hammock somewhere and get some hours of rest. As I reach a city that is literally built for cars, Wolfsburg, plans start to change again. The city welcomes me with wide, empty, multiple lane roads, but no proper cycling infrastructure. And somehow, the only driver that needs to use these roads at midnight on a Tuesday is not happy about sharing with the cyclist. Some people here obviously haven't changed much since the place was called Stadt des KDF Wagens by Fallersleben. Look it up. I make it through the city anyways. The wavy terrain here is usually super fun to ride for me, but at the moment I can't quite enjoy it, so I decide to sit down to have my second dinner. As I try to get back on my bike, I realize how all of the contact points, especially hands and feet, hurt a lot. I can barely grab onto my bars anymore, so I stop. Good morning. My plan for yesterday was to ride the leftover 500 kilometers home in one go, but I couldn't do it. Not necessarily energy-wise or muscular. That felt pretty good, but after two weeks of continuous riding, all the pressure points started hurting too much after yeah, the 270 kilometers I did yesterday. So ah, I'm just crossing the inner German border, the former inner German border. So yeah, my hands, my butt, and especially my feet, they hurt. And I, I said before, I will stop when it starts hurting. I mean, if it would have been I don't know, a hundred kilometers or something, I could have probably kept going, but it was still about 200 kilometers. I saw a bus station that was kind of covered and then I decided I would just go for some rest. Rested for about four hours, slept a little bit, and now I'm going for the 170, 100, 90 or whatever it is left now in the distance. I guess it's raining where I'm going. I hope I can dodge around it somehow. Then I will be home in about six, seven hours maybe. So for lunchtime, maybe have some real lunch today. Yay! I can kind of recall the track. I don't have a track uh, from Magdeburg home to Leipzig. So. It's a mixture of memory and Google Maps. All the pressure points really hurt today um, and I'm running out of energy. I don't know why all of a sudden. Like yesterday it was fine, um, but today it's really, really bad. I have, I had painkillers with me and I took one. Uh, I never had to do that on a, on a ride. I sometimes take them with me just in case anything happens, like you twist your ankle or whatever may happen on a ride, so you can at least make it to the nearest train station. But I never had to take them. And today, that's another, another first time. Um, I took one or half, half a pill. Um, now it should get better, but yeah, the, the roads don't really do me any 
any favor like this. I think it's about 80 kilometers to go, but <laughs> this is really hard. I don't know where all my energy went all of a sudden and why everything hurts. My hands, you see that? Yeah. Anyways, let's see. Yeah, the fucking cobbles. And all of a sudden, I'm back at the point where I started. There's no fireworks, no warm welcome, and the people are troubled with their everyday struggles, just as usual. This feels weird. In the end, I went to 69 of the 80 cities and can say that I now have been to every big city in Germany on my track bike. Within 18 days of cycling, I averaged about 190 kilometers per day with an overall of 23,000 meters of altitude gain. That's about 2.6 times up Mount Everest from sea level. And all that on a fixed gear bike. I'm happy to be back in Leipzig. I need some rest and a lot of ice cream. But when I'm laying here in my hammock in a park, enjoying the summer that finally arrived, looking back on my adventure, there's something in the back of my mind. Not really a plan, just a daydream. Something someone should do, a fantasy, to go on the next big adventure. <laughs>